Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the Wednesday, January 17th meeting of the Chicopee School Committee. Please join me in Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In compliance with open meeting law, we are recording and live broadcasting this meeting. Is anyone in the audience recording the meeting? If so, please state your name and the reason why you're doing so. Seeing none, we'll move on to announcement uh, of any members who are joining us remotely. It looks like we have Susan Satella Lopes who's joining us remotely. Is that correct? Susan, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to take a moment of silence for all those who serve in the military and for all those who protect us. Thank you. Uh, can we please have a roll call for attendance? Mayor View. Here. Ms. Russo. Here. Mr. Barcelo. Yes. Mr. Doubt. Here. Mrs. Perrett. Mrs. Schofield. Here. Mr. Brooks. Here. Mr. Lamoth. Here. Mr. Gerard. Here. Mr. Bernard. Here. Mrs. Lopes. Present. And Mr. Zatella. Yeah. <laughs> 11 yes, and 11 present, and one absent. So just for the viewing audience, I want to let you know that the school committee member, Sandra Perrette, is here. She's in the audience today. She will be sworn in officially tomorrow. And Sandra, welcome to the meeting. Unfortunately, because you're not sworn in, you won't be able to participate. And obviously, you already know that. So we're looking, looking forward to uh, having you involved in the next meeting and those that follow. Public announcements by committee members. I'll start to my left with the vice chair, Don Lamoth. Yes, um, we've had a couple snowstorms, one of them on the big side. And because of public safety, I'm imploring everybody to shovel their sidewalks. I made a trek down Chicopee and Meadow Streets, and there's several that weren't done. I mean, luckily it was warm enough and most of it melted, but guys, you gotta shovel those sidewalks for the kids. We don't want any more injuries. Thank you. Thank you, and Sonny Brooks. I would just like to say, check on your neighbors. If you haven't seen your neighbor, look in on them. Let's look out for each other. It's cold outside. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Grace Goldfield. Um, yes, I'd just like to offer um, sympathy and condolences to the Zigorowski family. Um, on the passing of uh, Councilman Zagrowski's wife, Patty. An angel who walked among us and is now an angel watching over us. Thank you. Chet Satella. I'm all set. Thank you. Doug Gerard. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I too would like to offer up condolences to the Zagorowski family. Um, both boys uh, today at the funeral gave uh, just an unbelievable eulogy and uh, you know, when they were describing their mother as an angel, um, they weren't uh, they weren't kidding. She, she certainly was. And uh, I was just watching the news this evening before the meeting, and uh, I heard about a uh, student uh, that got hit by a school bus trapped underneath it uh, in Florida. So my heart goes uh, out to their family. And uh, you know, parents, if you can educate your your kids. Um, and let them know that they really should stay on the sidewalk until the bus um, is is far away uh, to avoid any any kind of uh, catastrophes like this. Thank you, Diana Russo. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I just wanted to note that the community meeting for um, World Ward One is on January 22nd. So coming up, I've seen these shared on the Facebook page. So excited that our ward's coming up. There, it's from 9 to 10.30, and then also in the evening from 5.30 to 7. And I hope to attend the evening and hope to see more people there as well. Thank you. Jason Doubt. I'm all set, Mayor. Thank you. And Ron Bar Barcelo. I'm sorry, oh. uh, Ron Bernard. Jeez. 
<laughs> all set, Mayor. Thank you. And David Barslow. I'm all set, Mayor. And Susan Zatella Lopes. Thank you. I'm all set. And our superintendent. Uh, just good evening to everyone and um, stay warm. And uh, winter is here. So, of course, I would just like to remind the community that we definitely try to keep kids in school, but when school is canceled or delayed, we definitely do it in the best interest of safety and security of staff and students. Thank you, Superintendent. We have no public input. No one signed up today, so we'll move on. We have no visitors scheduled, and we'll go right into our agenda. It's approval of minutes 24-1-7. Move that the minutes of the organizational meeting of the school committee held on January 3rd, 2024, be approved. Vice Chair. Motion to approve. Any discussion on the minutes? Anyone joining us from Zoom? We'll take a roll call. Mayor View. Yes. Ms. Russo. Yes. Mr. Barcelo. Yes. Mr. Doubt. Yes. Mrs. Schofield. Yes. Mr. Brooks. Yes. Mr. Lamoth. Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. 11, yes. Motion carries. Uh, reports 24-1-8. Uh, report on personnel action taken. You need to defer to HR uh, Director? Yes, I'd like to defer to <coughs> HR Director um, Deb Green. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. For the last two weeks, our total new hires have been 10. That has been one Unit A member, five Unit E members. That would be Unit A as in the teachers, and Unit E is the paraprofessionals or teaching assistants. There were five resignations and zero retirements. As of today, we have 71 openings on school spring. 29 of those are Unit A, 29 are Unit E, and of those 20, our special education openings. Um, in Mrs. Pratt's absence, I would like to read um, the conferences. Most of these are all one day or virtual conferences that we have numerous staff attending, guiding behaviors in early childhood, controlling conflict for school leaders. The MCAS alt review session was attended by a number of staff members. The mass legal webinar sessions one through three is being attended by a number of us in preparation for negotiations. The mass midwinter meeting conference is being attended by Ms. Belleville and, and Dr. Ware. The DESE history social science leaders meeting is being attended. Mayford, the school health education conference, school mental health, and the third mass legal session having to do with strike and recovery is being attended by the entire executive team. Thank you. Thank you. New business 24-1-9. Move that the bills warrant S010524 totaling $121,272 be approved. Sonny, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. And Jay Dow, could you please read into the official record the warrants? Absolutely. So tonight we'll be voting on two warrants. I will read the totals of the two warrants combined into the record, and then we will vote on them individually. For athletics, $5,740. Food services, $133,929. General expenses, $99,290. Grants, $131,434. Special Education, $335,237. Transportation, $2,176, for a total of $707,809. Thank you. Uh as mentioned, we'll be voting on the first warrant, that's S010524 for $121,272. $121, Any <laughs> discussion on the first warrant? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. Mayor View? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Barcelo? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Perrette? Oops, excuse me. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. Mr. Lamas? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. And Mr. Zatella? 
Yes. 11, yes. Motion carries. 24-1-10. Move that the bills warrant S011224, totaling $586,537.38 be approved. Grace Schofield, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Any discussion on the second warrant? Yes, please. Sure, Susan. Susan Zatello. Thank you. In this warrant this evening, we're going to be voting on whether to approve a $282,500 bill this evening. From We're going to be paying Kalo and Phoenix. I hope I pronounced that correctly. They're a company on East Street in Chicopee. The payment is to um, get some work done. Well, the bill is for an architectural and engineering services for the new maintenance warehouse that is currently out to bid. The new warehouse will be located at 18, 816, excuse me, James Street, and it will house the craftsmen and the tools and the supplies that are currently located at Chicopee High, Comp High School at the James L. Stefanik Shop Building. So the new warehouse will free up more space for career and career technical programs at Chicopee Comp High School. So I hope everything goes smoothly with this payment this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Any, dis any further discussion on the warrants? Vice Chair Don Lamoff. Yes, this $282,000, should this be coming out of student money or should it be coming out of some sort of capital? That's a good question. Hmm? It's currently coming out of um, ESSER, but it's not. Oh, it's coming out of ESSER. I guess I'm good with it then. Oh, <laughs> yes, oh, sir. I'm just saying, because ESSER yeah. was designed for that. Yeah, correct. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? We'll take a roll call. Mayor View. <coughs> yes. Ms. Russo. Yes. Mr. Barcelo. Yes. Mr. Doubt. Yes. Mrs. Schofield. Yes. Mr. Brooks. Yes. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. 11, yes. Motion carries 24-1-11. Move that the job description for early childhood coordinator be approved. Check, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Any discussion? Dr. Ware. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this um, is a new position that we are looking to create um, due to the fact that our early ch childhood needs are busting at the seams. Currently, um, we have Satella Preschool, and then we have preschool um, students at five other schools in our district. And so we are growing um, due to the fact that we made a pledge to actually ha um, offer universal preschool, as well as in um, uh, one of the requirements um, through DESI in order to um, uh, uh, use uh, ESSER funds, one of our evidence-based practices was to focus on pre-childhood, I mean, pre-K and early childhood literacy and um, uh, access for students. So this person would actually oversee that process, which includes overseeing the lottery process that um, supplies uh, for the students that go to all of our uh, different programs, as well as work closely with the assistant superintendents. That's the uh, for accountability instruction, as well as student support services, as well as special ed. As we continue to grow our preschool, in that the fact that we currently do not have someone overseeing that that's absorbed by the um, the executive team and so this position again would be new is not currently in the budget the way it will be funded would be also ESSER which is one of the allowances through ESSER to use evidence um, to fund positions that support evidence-based practices such as early childhood um, learning and so this person will be under an indep independent contract and we're looking to actually start this person sooner rather than later because our lottery starts very very soon, and we want to get in front of it. Great school, Phil. Um, so one of my questions was, where is the funding coming from? Mm -hmm. So you said it's coming from ESSER. Correct. And um, so my concern is, first of all, I, I see the need for mm -hmm. the, um, the position. But my concern is, once ESSER is done, which is this year, mm -hmm. how will 
the position be funded. Correct. And so we actually know ESSER is going away in September 2024. So part of the conversation is twofold. One, it would have to be put into the budget. So that would be part of the budget planning process that I'm doing right now with the team. Two, would actually be through the Student Opportunity Act, which also is part of um, the, the one of the allowances is how to spend the money to support early childhood learning. And then three, we actually do have um, vacancy positions, for example, one is I have an interpreter position that I didn't fill on purpose, so that I actually s could support this position. So it would be threefold. So it would have to go into the budget, so you're absolutely right to say that, since ESSER is going away, but it would also be funded by the Student Opportunity Act, as well as unfilled positions that I'm intentionally not filling. Thank you. No problem. Sure. Vice Chair. Yes, I'm, I'm concerned that we're filling positions on, on grant money, and I heard everything you just said, mm -hmm. but I'm still concerned about it. How many more new positions are you going to be bringing forward between now and mm -hmm. budget time? That, so I don't have an, a direct answer for that. This is actually coming out of the need because of the, the situation we are in with our early childhood situation, the numbers and the actual overseeing of the new curriculum that we implemented and things that we need to do to be in compliance okay. to actually continue to support our programs. So this, um, this position itself, and then like um, as far as new positions, I can't honestly tell you right now, this is just really going off of need and really paying attention to what was already in the budget and really just reworking some of those vacancies that I'm looking not to fill, that are not teacher driven, but they're on the um, independent contract side. In, in the paper yesterday, I believe it was, there was a uh, Mara Healy's talking about funding some of the early childhood for gateway cities, which we are one. Mm -hmm. So. If we fund this prior to her coming out with the money, are we going to be able to take that grant and fund this? Correct. We, we would. Are. We would, yes. Okay, so I, I would understand that. Thank you. No problem. Sonny Brooks. My question is, uh, who will they report to? Mm -hmm. So the uh, Assistant Superintendent for Accountability and Instruction, that's Ms. Jen Belleville. Okay. Anyone else first time? Oh. <clears throat> Grace Schofield, second time. I just want to have a follow-up question with, um, so you said one of the positions, that, mm -hmm. uh, interpreters, that you didn't sell. So what's, how does, what's that salary that would offset the salary that you have listed under this job Correct. description? So there's actually about $100,000 in ESSER, so that would be about a five to $15,000 difference, but the interpreter salary ranges between forty and 50000 That was the range that was budgeted for it. So mm -hmm. I, again, it was about, what, 20%. Thanks for your creativity. No Thank you. Any other discussion on the new position? We'll take a roll call. Mayor View? Yes. Russo? Yes. Mr. Barcelo? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Here. I mean, Mr. yes. <laughs> Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. And Mr. Zatella? Yes. 11, yes. Motion carries. 21-4-12. Move that the 2024-2025 school calendar be approved. Doug Gerard, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Any discussion on the new calendar? Dr. Marcus Ware. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is just presented as it's um, part of the function of the school committee. This is the, the draft of the 2024-2025 calendar that was worked on the committee. So I just, um, if there are any in-depth questions, myself and Ms. Belleville can actually answer any questions. Thank you. Any further discussion or comments? David Barcelo. Yes, is this a uh, calendar cast in stone? No, it's a draft, sir. So I, if there's any feedback, I'm definitely open to if there's, um, there's uh, any questions about it. But if you once voted upon it, it would be in stone. But if any changes need to be made, we would actually bring it to you all. Well, it's just that I had gotten some David. calls. David, could you just uh, use your microphone? Thank I you, sir. I had gotten some calls from uh, some concerned uh, teachers about about the schedule about you know how certain days fall so i was just wondering if there was going to be room for some negotiation in there if uh you know everyone wasn't pleased with how everything's working out okay so actually i'm going to ask Ms. belva to step in she may be aware of some of those concerns i didn't hear anything nothing's come to my plate but that doesn't mean it hasn't come to Ms. belleville so we haven't heard any concerns that have come to the table. The committee, um, we have a professional development committee who actually plays a huge piece in um, 
developing the calendar. Some of the changes that I can note for you is you'll note that there's two days of new teacher orientation. That's coming off of the need that we don't provide enough, uh, we haven't been providing enough time for some of the training right. for the new hires that we have. So we're planning for two days of mandatory training for all staff that are getting hired into the district. The other big change is moving that third professional development day that you typically saw at the front of the calendar year to March. And the rationale for the professional development committee behind that was that teachers are anxious to start the school year and that's a choice PD day. And so we really need to focus on our site-based professional development and convocation and allowing teachers to get ready to prepare for the school year. With that, the March PD Day will be the choice PD Day. It's much easier to get high quality professional development presenters during March as we're not vying with all other districts who are providing that professional development day that first week of school. Um, so the, they had gotten some feedback, the, the professional development committee regarding that, and that was their recommendation. That's the only other big change. All right, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Grace Goldfield. I just had a question with, um, is it in um, Unit A's contract that they can only start after a certain day, that, like the last week of August, is that, am I correct? In you are correct in that. Uh, thank you. And all of the, um, the half days and the professional development days and the teacher collaboration days follow the Unit A contract. Thank you. Any other discussion on the calendar? Jason Dow. Um, I guess just, you know, I, I plan on um, supporting this, um, but just kind of food for thought moving forward, you know, as a parent of elementary students, I see uh, a few of the, the teacher collaboration days, um, and those fall on a Friday before a vacation, for example, and as, as a parent of elementary school students, you know, it, it does, it makes it a little tough sometimes on parents, you know, to have to find people to watch their kids one week and then find people the next week. So I, I intend on supporting this, but just, you know, kind of food for thought to put out there that, you know, that that is, you know, especially on those days where uh, specifically it's only the pre-K that um, have half days, you know, that that does put a strain on, on parents. I can turn over to Ms. Belleville for that commentary. No, I greatly appreciate that, mm -hmm. that feedback. Um, it has been a conversation. We did look at attendance for students um, on those half days. We understand the burden on families. It was a conversation to move it during um, the week. Um, one of the concerns for the educators was that being at the end of the week, there is not the disruption of the learning during midweek. We pulled the principals, the majority of the principals preferred it on the Friday as well. One of the things that I do know several of the principals are looking at is what could we do for childcare during those half days to help support our families to address that concern. So I know that is a topic for our elementary school principals. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any further discussion or comments? We'll take a roll call. Mayor View? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Barcelo? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. 11? Yes. Motion carries, 24-1-13. Move that any member of the school committee wishing to attend the 2024 National School Board Association and SBA annual conference and exhibition April 6th through April 8th, 2024 to do so. Deanna Russo, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Dr. Marcus Ware. Thank you, Mayor. I feel like I'm speaking a lot tonight. My apologies. That's okay. And so um, I, I actually put this on there and actually um, I spoke with also Ms. Schofield um, about this. One of the, the things I know is in my purview is also to pay attention to be fiscally responsible about how we spend our money around professional development. And so one of the things that um, I wanted to make sure didn't bypass the school committee as well as I know the other opportunities, opportunities have been presented to the school committee um, is that this is the 
again, the, Na the National School Board Association Conference. Um, this is specifically for school committee and school board members. Yes, it is in New Orleans. Um, so every year they pick a major city to have the function at. But um, I, if you haven't had the opportunity to see in your packet, the workshop, workshop sessions are designed to support a lot of the work that um, I also would believe your subcommittees would do around um, supporting our students. And so I just wanted to make sure that this opportunity didn't miss, um, bypass you all, and you can actually vote upon it this evening. Any further discussion? We'll take David Barslow. Yeah, my concern would be if there's enough funding. Uh, you know, let's say everybody decided they wanted to go on a nice vacation to New Orleans. I mean, is, is there money available We're for all of work. this? So there is a um, school committee line to support professional development for you all. Um, is it enough to support all of you? No, no, but we also would actually have to talk about that. It is a converse, conversation that you all can have if you should feel that it's really important that you all go. The um, other piece to that is there are, there's the, like the mass mass conference and theoretically there are districts that send their whole school boards um, just because they do feel like it's a conference that is worth it. So that would be a conversation amongst you all to talk about that and then of of course, um, we could um, speak about um, how to support that and from what is in the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? We'll take a roll call. Mayor of you? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Barcelo? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. And Mr. Zatella? Yes. 11, yes. Motion carries, 24-1-14. Organization of subcommittees, move that the 2024 subcommittee assignments be approved. A, election of officers, policy and human resources subcommittee, chairperson, vice chairperson. B, election of officers, superintendent evaluation subcommittee, chairperson, vice chairperson. C, election of officers, finance and budget subcommittee, chairperson, vice chairperson. D, election of officers, negotiations, resources subcommittee, chairperson and vice chairperson. E, election of officers, curriculum subcommittee, chairperson and vice chairperson. F, Election of Officers, Facilities Committee, Chairperson, Vice Chairperson. So first we'll start off with uh, the actual committees and I wanna take a moment to thank our Vice Chair, Don Lamoth, for putting uh, your, taking your requests in and creating subcommittees that hopefully meet everyone's needs. So first uh, we'd like to vote on just the acceptance of our, our subcommittee assignments. I can, Dr. Ware, would you like to read them or I could read them into the record if you'd like? I don't mind reading them. Let me just, just a second. And then we'll individually vote on chair and vice chair for each subcommittee. And just a point of reference, those who are in the subcommittees would be the ones who vote for chair, vice chair. Read the complete list, Mayor. That'd be wonderful. Okay. We'll start with... Uh, Curriculum subcommittee. All right. Curriculum subcommittee, Mr. David Barcelo, Ms. Susan um, Lopes, Mr. Chester Satella. Facility subcommittee, Mr. Douglas Gerard, Mr. Ron Bernard, Ms. Susan Lopes, Mr. Chester Satella. Finance and budget subcommittee, Ms. Deanna Russo, Mr. Carlton Brooks, Mr. Don Lamoth, Mr. Douglas Gerard. Policy and Human Resources Subcommittee, Ms. Deanna Russo, Mr. David Barcelo, Mr. Jason Doubt, Ms. Sandra Perrette. Superintendent's Evaluation Subcommittee, Ms. Sandra Perrette, Ms. Grace Schofield, Mr. Ron Bernard. Lastly, Negotiation, negotiation Subcommittee, Mr. Jason Doubt, Ms. Grace Schofield, Mr. Carlton Brooks, Mr. Don Lamoth. Thank you. So could uh, Jason, Jason, I believe you're next, entertain a motion for approval? Uh, motion to approve. So we have a, a motion to approve the subcommittees as laid out by our vice chair and approved by the chairman. Any discussion on the assignments for subcommittees? Through Zoom, so we'll take a, a roll call, please, to accept Mayor, the subcommittees. Mayor View? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Barcelo? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? 
Yes. Mrs. Lopes. Yes. Mr. Zatella. Yes. 11, yes. Motion carries. Now we'll start with the election of officers. So we'll start with the curriculum subcommittee and the members of the curriculum subcommittee are David Barslow, Susan Lopes, and Chet Satella. Could one of those members please nominate a chairperson? May I please? Sure, Susan Satella Lopes. I'd like to nominate David Barslow as chairperson, please. So we have a motion to nominate David Barcelo as chairperson of the curriculum subcommittee. That's second by the okay. chair. Any discussion? Again, we'll be voting and we have to do that uh, orally because we have someone joining us remotely. So the voting members will be David Barcelo, Susan Zatella Lopes and Chet Zatella. The curriculum subcommittee, could we please have a roll to accept David Barcelo as the chairman? Mr. Mayor, if I may for a moment. Yeah. The order of the committees on the paper and the order of the committees on the agenda are not quite the same. Ooh. So we were getting ready to record. Um, Sorry. Point of reference, we'll follow along with what's actually on the agenda, which I will start over with the Human Resource Subcommittee. Human Resource Subcommittee is Deanna Russo, David Barcelo, Jason Doubt, and Sandra Perrette. Could one of those members please uh, nominate a chair? It's got to be one of the people on the subcommittee. It has to be Deanna, David, Jason, or Sandra. And Sandra is not a voting member tonight, so. I, I nominate Jason. Our chair. So we have Jason Dowd has been nominated as chairman of the Human Resource Subcommittee. Any discussion or comments? All right, we'll take a roll call. That's again a nomination for Human Resource Chair Jason Dowd. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Barcelo? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Three, yes. Motion carries. Vice Chair. I nominate Sandra Perret. Sandra Perret has been nominated as Vice Chair. Any discussion on the Vice Chair? Again, for the Human Resource Subcommittee. Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Barcelo? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Motion carries. Three yes. Oh, sorry. Three yes, motion carries. And now we will move on to the Superintendent Evaluation Subcommittee. That's Sandra Perrette, Grace Schofield, and Ronald Bernard. Ron, can I get a nomination for chair? Uh, I'd like to nominate Grace Schofield for chair of that committee, subcommittee. Okay. Grace Schofield has been nominated for the chair of the Superintendent's Evaluation Subcommittee. Any discussion or comments? I see Seeing none, take a roll call. Mrs. Perrette? Excuse me. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Two, yes. Motion carries. Vice Chair, again for the uh, Superintendent Evaluation Subcommittee. Grace Schofield? I'd like to nominate uh, Sandra Perrette. Sandra Perrette has been nominated for Vice Chair of the Superintendent Evaluation Subcommittee. Any discussion amongst the subcommittee? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Two, yes. Motion carries. Finance and Budget Subcommittee. That's the members of the Finance and Budget Subcommittee are Deanna Russo, Carlton Brooks, Donald Lamoth, and Douglas Gerard. We need a nomination of a chairman. Vice. I, Don Lamoth. I nominate Douglas Gerard for chair. Doug Gerard has been nominated as chairman. Any discussion amongst the subcommittee? Seeing none, we'll take a roll. Ms. Russo. Yes. Mr. Brooks. Yes. Mr. Lamoth. Yes. Mr. Gerard. Yes. Four, yes. Motion carries. Nomination for vice chair of the finance and budget subcommittee. 
I'd like to nominate uh, Deanna Russo for Vice Chair, uh, Finance, Budget Subcommittee. Deanna Russo has been nominated as Vice Chair. Any discussion or comments? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call amongst the subcommittee. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Four, yes. Motion carries. Negotiations Resource Subcommittee. That's Jason Doubt, Grace Schofield, Sonny Brooks, and Donald Lamoth. Can I get a nomination for chair? Don, can I get a nomination? I'm looking at my list. I got to look at this list here. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm with you. We're on finance? We're on uh, negotiations. Negotiations. I nominate Grace Schofield. Chair? Grace Schofield has been nominated as chair of the negotiations resource subcommittee. Any discussion or comments? Amongst the subcommittee members, we'll take a roll call. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. You and Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Four, yes. Motion carries. Negotiations Resource Subcommittee Vice Chair. I need a nomination. Grace, can I get a nomination? I'd like to nominate Don Lamoth. Don Lamoth has been nominated as Vice Chair. Any discussion or comments? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. And Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Four, yes. Motion carries. Curriculum subcommittee, we need a chair. The members of the curriculum subcommittee, I feel like we deja vu. David Barslow, Susan Satella Lopes, and Chet Satella. I need a nomination for a chair. I'd like to nominate David Barslow, please, for chair. Thank you, Susan. We have David Barslow has been nominated as chairman of the curriculum subcommittee. Any discussion or comments? We'll take a roll call amongst the subcommittee members. Mr. Barcelo. Yes. Mrs. Lopes. Yes. Mr. Zatella. Yes. Three, M yes. Motion carries. We need a nomination for curriculum subcommittee vice chairman. Susan Lopes. We have a nomination of Susan Lopes as vice chair of the curriculum subcommittee. Any discussion or comments? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call amongst the committee members. Mr. Barcelo. Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. Three, yes. Motion carries. Facilities subcommittee. Facilities subcommittee consists of Doug Gerard, Ron Bernard, Susan Lopes, and Chet Zatella. We need to nominate a chairperson. Susan Zatella. I'd like to nominate Mr. Bernard, please. We have a nomination of uh, Ron Bernard. Any discussion on the nomination of chairman? Again, for the facility subcommittee, seeing none, we'll take a roll call amongst those committee members. Mr. Gerard. Yes. Mr. Bernard. Yes. Mrs. Lopes. Yes. Mr. Zatella. Yes. Four, yes. Motion carries. A nomination for vice chair of the facility subcommittee. I'd like to nominate Mr. Gerard. Doug Gerard has been nominated as vice chair. Any discussion or comments about the nomination? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call amongst the subcommittee members. Mr. Gerard. Yes. Mr. Bernard. Yes. Mrs. Lopes. Yes. Mr. Zatella. Yes. Four, yes. Motion carries. Thank you and congratulations to the members of the subcommittees, the chairs and vice chairs. Thank you for your to conducting business here at the school committee. We'll move on to new business continued 24-1-15. Review pedestrian safety and determine the status of safe routes to school assessments. Topic requested by Ms. Sandra Perret. So Ron, can I get a motion? I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the assessments. So uh, just a, a point of information, I, these are two requests that came in from our school committee person who's waiting to be sworn in, and uh, she had requested that we postpone them to the next meeting. So if it'd be a, a favorable uh, amendment to your motion. I'd like to so, amend my motion to uh, 
go along with postponing it to the next meeting. Thank you. Any discussion on the postponement of 21-1-15? Looking forward to that discussion at our next meeting. We'll take a roll call. Mayor View? Yes. Mr. Barcelo? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. And Mr. Zatella? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. And Mr. Brooks? Yes. 11, yes. Motion carries. 24-1-16. Update on the Bowie School Playground, the accessibility of all school playgrounds, and to investigate having the school playground supervised by the Department of Parks and Recreation. Topic requested by Ms. Sandra Perrette. Uh, David Barcelo, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. David, it's the same course of action. We were hopeful that since Sandra Perrette cannot participate today until she gets sworn in tomorrow, her request was uh, that we could postpone this discussion till our next meeting. If that's a favorable amendment. Yes, that's fine. Mr. So Matthew. you have a motion to postpone? Yes, sir. Motion to postpone. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. Mayor View? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Barcelo? Yes. Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. I was ready to. Mr. Brooks? Yes. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. 11? Yes. Motion carries. 24-1-17. Storm damage from snow and rain, topic requested by Mr. Don Lamoth. Don Lamoth. Yes, um, I was just, I put that on there because I know we had a, a lot of rain and we had a lot of snow and in the past we've had damage to gym floors like at uh, Bow one time the floor got flooded and then one time um, the old school, the Chickabee Comp vocational area got flooded and the gym got flooded. So I was just wondering, did we have any, any damage because of these two storms? Yes, so I actually invited Mr. Scott Chapdelaine here this evening to actually give us a report, up, an update. Good evening, everyone. Um, yes, we did have some storm damage. There was um, seven buildings that we had problems at. Um, as you guys know, um, all of our schools are basically called a flat roof school, flat roof building. So it's not truly a flat roof. Um, the uh, insulation, when they put the new roof on, the insulation is all tapered down to the drains. And basically, every normal rain, the water will hit the roof and it'll be, it'll, it'll be directed to the drains. With the snow on the roof, what ended up happening was the drains were blocked with the melting snow. So that's when we find all the other little holes in the roof where there may be a, a leak we didn't know about. It's similar to when we have a, a leak on one of our roofs and we can't find where the leak is. We plug the drain with a plug, we flood the roof, and then we find where, where the hole is. So the exact same thing happened and we found seven different buildings. Some had four or five holes. Um, some was, well, some was damaged, you found some rocks on some of the roofs, um, and some of it was just, the, the, the damage could have been there a long time, but it was because the roof drains were blocked. We did end up with some uh, damage to the gym floor at uh, Chickabee Comp. It's not in the playing area, it's more like under the bleachers or where the bleachers are. We, do, we are trying to drain it, uh, dry it out, and sometimes uh, it got a little warped, and sometimes those warps do come out, but we might have to sand that area and refinish it. I don't have any, you know, it was only a week ago, so I don't have any of the bills from the, the roofing company yet, but everything, everywhere we had a roof, it was a leak, it was addressed. Thank you, Facilities Director Scott Chaplin. Any other comments or discussion? The, the roof at Chickabee Comp, isn't that a barrel roof? So some of it is barrel roof, but the majority of it is flat roof. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any other discussion? Thank you for that information. Thank you. Well, that concludes our meeting. So can I, we'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Roll call, please. Mayor View? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Barcelo? Mr. Doubt? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. 
Mr. Brooks? Yes. Mr. Lamoth? Yes. Mr. Gerard? Yes. Mr. Bernard? Yes. Mrs. Lopes? Yes. Mr. Zatella? Yes. 11, yes. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.